Chit of Helens here, how's it going Anamorphic Buddies? Uh, here the fall winter season continues, so we're gonna have another post-processing chop shop. This is one of the most common questions I see around the web, and especially from people starting out in this distorted reality that we love. It goes like, how do I stretch the footage properly? Uh, well, there are several different methods, and here I'm gonna cover After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop, and Final Cut Pro X, even though I hate it. First, why do we need to stretch the footage? Well, the visual answer is pretty easy, because things don't look as they should. And why is that? Because the anamorphic glass compresses the horizontal axis while keeping the vertical untouched. Good! So how much is that compression? Well, the lenses usually say it, but the most common values are 1.33, 1.5 and 2 times. There are a few odd numbers out there, such as 1.75 and others, but once you understand how to do it, the stretch itself doesn't matter much. So now we know that the image are, is compressed by 1.33, 1.5 or 2 times in the horizontal axis. Let's trail off a bit. A pixel is the smallest area of an image, a tiny square with a single color value. You noticed I used the word square just now, right? Nowadays, most imaging resources, such as cameras and monitors, use their pixels with a square ratio uh, for resolution, which means that if you divide the pixel's height by width or vice versa, you get one as a result. Back in the DV era, cameras played with this aspect ratio. 4x3 had a 0.9 pixel aspect ratio, while widescreen 16x9 had a 1.21212121 pixel aspect ratio. The sensor size never changed, and neither did the recorded image, but the pixel aspect ratio told the editing program to stretch or compress the horizontal axis of the image by that value. This is becoming kind of useful, isn't it? Now we know that one can change the pixel's aspect ratio, making the recorded image shorter or wider according to a specific value. Well, it seems this is what we need with all that stretch factor thing. Starting with Premiere, import your footage and then right-click on the file here in the media bin. From the menu, go to Modify, then Interpret Footage. A pop-up will open and look at that! There's a pixel aspect ratio menu. There. You just need to pick your lens stretch and voila, it's done, looking just like it should. After Effects has a few different options. First, you can import your footage and do the same thing as Premiere. Right click, go to Interpret Footage, then Main, and in Other Options, change the pixel aspect ratio to the desired stretch. To preview this change, enable the pixel aspect ratio correction on the viewer by clicking this icon. Another way is to just get your squeezed footage file, drop it into a new composition, go to its transform attributes, open up scale, and uncheck the chain link here. This allows you to scale width and height separately. Once that's done, just input the stretch factor multiplied by 100 into the width field. It's the first one. 133%, 150 or 200%. This part here is not exactly necessary, but it's how I like to do it since I always output everything at 1080p. Messing with the scale attribute will give me an image that's larger than my final resolution. So I do this step above as a start, then check the chain link, since this is the new ratio I want between height and width, and bring the width back down to 100%. This will reduce the height of the clip and make it fit inside the composition. It also leads to a higher vertical resolution, since the vertical pixels have been downscaled, like shooting at 4K to output at 1080p. Photoshop is almost like After Effects. I'm gonna use a still picture here, since I still do a lot of anamorphic photographs. To open the image size panel, go through Image, Image Size in the menus, or press Ctrl or Command Alt I. Here, select Percent as the measurement. It's usually set to pixels. You can see a chain link here too, looks familiar? It's on by default, so turn it off and again input the stretch factor multiplied by 100, 133, 150 or 200, or any other value if you have a different lens. Hit OK and enjoy your right looking photo. For Final Cut Pro X, import your footage, 
then create a new project and in the pop-up window select use custom settings then in the video property section instead of set based on first video clip set it to custom and pick custom from the drop down menu in the first field regarding the width input your shooting resolution multiplied by your lens stretch factor for example here I have 1920 multiplied by 1.33 which equals 2553. Adjust any other fields that you might want to change and press OK. Now, drag your clip to the timeline, click on it, go to the Transform menu, click Show to expand the properties, then on the little arrow by Scale to show both horizontal and vertical scale. Finally, put your lens stretch times 100 in the X scale, and the footage should look perfectly stretched to fit the project window. The process is exactly the same for other stretch values. For 1.5, I'm going to use 2880 by 180 and then change the X scale. And for 2 times lenses, I'm going to use 38540 by 1080, X scale set to 200%. Then edit, export, or do whatever with your now good looking footage. Whew, that was a lot of different options. I hope I helped anyone that's struggling with the software or with the idea behind stretching the pixels and if you like this video you should subscribe to the channel for the upcoming videos and head on to the blog for more anamorphic content the anamorphic on a budget guide the pitch for the anamorphic cookbook and a calculator to see if your lens will vignette or not you can also get an awesome t-shirt and help me with this project so go out now and shoot some pretty pictures because I'm in for a rainy Sunday Chitfadans out